Welcome to the Mike and Meta Show. Hey, everybody. We are going to tell you a story today. I think it's an important story. It's ma- the story of It involves Mick. Texas and MSNBC. Oh, my God. It does. It does. Even for a little company like us. And it, it, it includes some other things that are more important, I think. It yeah. includes ethics and values. True. And, um, and I see both sides of this story. Absolutely. And um, well, so I it, think what's in it for everyone here is, you know, watching this thing through. Um, and if you have your own business and you're in our business or related businesses, it's kind of lessons that can be learned, right? Absolutely. And and I think it needs to be said just to be out there. Yeah, this isn't you know? a, this isn't going to be accusatory towards anyone. No, no, this no, isn't no. going to be anything like that, but it's So, should we tell them what it's going to be? Yes. And also, by the way, if you're listening to this podcast, you can see us on YouTube as well and you can see us at the Mike and Meta Show dot com, um, and dot, not dot net dot au dot tv dot, <laughs> dot, well, don't get us dot, confused yeah, dot, dot everything it's and, a, so. and, and if you are watching the youtube video you know and you want to tickle the subscribe button without smashing it uh-huh. um give and, it a little or the podcast yeah too. give it a little g-spotting on the there you go p-spot Tickle g-spot it. the subscribe button so so this is called make dildos not war yep and it's a kind of funny fun saying that we trademarked um but it had a really deep meaning for you and me it did so 2007 we started off the year really nicely we were doing gangbusters and everything was swimming and we had this amazing um fellow business that that we were dealing with that um was this 2007 it was 2007 i looked it up and um all of a sudden in january or february you get an email yeah but the first thing i no, it wasn't uh wasn't january and february in january I entered into a contract with someone to take our recipe and make make our silicone a raw for us. materials right to t- to take the silicone and make it into our the Tanta silicone right and and um that was a big deal it was a year contract yeah it was a year contract it was a big deal for mm-hmm. us and it was really nice terms like we were and all we really gr- loved we were them all grown up we, yeah exactly <laughs> and then you get this email yeah, I get an email in, I think it was March. And um, it was and at it was, night, as I recall. Yeah, and it was from the CEO. So, so first of all, a little backstory. Right. Um, the two sales representatives for this company, uh, the district manager and then our sales rep, right. were just... They were so great. Yeah, they're fantastic to this day. Business they st- partners. Uh, yeah, you they know, stay that in matters. touch with us. Yep, right. And they were there to make sure that we didn't run out of material, make sure that mm-hmm. we didn't overstock material. So we weren't, you know, cause we're a little company and cash flow is king. So again, for everyone, these are things to watch. So cash flow is king. <laughs> and uh, so, not, so that we always had just in time with JIT inventory. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess this is for everyone. You don't even need to just be in our business, no, you know, cause I've been in, right. I've been in high tech and dealt with Matsushita and some huge mm-hmm. supply chain people. And this, this happens. Um, anyway, so the two sales reps are just fantastic. I want to say their names, but um, we're not going but to, we're not going to, <laughs> right. Um, they're fantastic humans to this day. They still write me, stay in touch, write us at Christmas. Uh-huh. Right. Um, and in March, unbeknownst to the two sales people, um, I get a letter from the CEO of this chemical company. That sounds really ominous. Yeah, well, like very Batman esque, right? Mm-hmm. A chemical company that he fell into and turned green <laughs> and then became a superhero. Um, <laughs> anyway, this, this chemical company, um, and something to the extent of so we we basically had locked down material supplier right. for a year right um supply chain everything. and it had taken us a while to do this right and, and so i get this email i don't mean uh, to keep dragging this on but i think some of this backstory is important i get this email from the ceo of this company that says to the effect but these these were the exact words um dear mr blacksmith um i want to inform you that our moral compass 
no longer points in your direction. Such a hard language. You know, and within that's... 30 days, we are going to cease any business, any supply chain, any business with you whatsoever. Right. And Put that's our primary a... raw material. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Put the, the company started as Tantasilicone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, and that's what we do. I mean, we do metal, we do leather, we do right. some but, urethanes but, and but stuff our, like that. Our... But Prime. Right. We make silicone right. parts. We have our own chemistry. We do that. And uh, you have 30 days to find a new supplier. We're not, basically, I'm not going to help you right. go fuck yourself. Right. Exactly. Um, not in a good way. So not I think he Luke. sent that to yeah. me and the sales reps at the exact same time. So, so it was a shock to everyone. So it was a shock to everyone, right? And uh, so you talk about supply chain disruption. You know, I had some college classes on that, which are just incredible. And if I'm I'm not trying to pitch my school, but, you know, Stanford has an amazing online supply chain course in their graduate school of business. And this was really a planet killer. Right. And they talk about this kind of disruption and we're facing it now in our current, you know, our current situation with supply chain disruption. Oh, completely. And this was just hi-ya. But it was, it was really odd. Um, and so I think it was two days later, God, I just want to say his name. Mm-hmm. Two days later, the sales rep, uh, showed up at our door. Uh, he was in Los Angeles, lived in Los Angeles. He was the Southern California representative for and this And we company. were in San Diego. We were in time. San Diego. Yep. So and, uh, shows up at our door and was just appalled, right? I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stick my neck on the line and do this and blah, blah, blah. And I just don't understand because... At the time, we are shipping currently to a place right around the corner from you that is making nose cones. That we're sending them raw material. They're making nose cones that house the gun turret for Apache helicopters. Right, and and this was during wartime. Yep, you know? this is during wartime. And then around the corner from that, or down the street, I think in National City, there's another place that right. they're using our material to make body armor. Mm-hmm. Um, but our moral compass no longer points in your direction. And I don't understand that. I don't think that this person was challenging his CEO. I think he was equally confused because I'm going to, no, I won't say a name. So one of the (laughs) largest, uh, toy companies i think it is probably right now the largest toy company around um sex toy company sex toy, sex company. toy company the ceo who Had wrote been, me who right. wrote me the letter that, this was w- the odd part was responsible for supplying and l- closing the deal closing the sale and supplying Back when he was a salesperson not a ceo correct and supplying this company with material for many years right right so wild. So it was really wild. So here you go. Now for all you in photography businesses or dildo businesses or tech or whatever, when your supply chain immediately dries up or you have 30 days to secure your major supply chain, what do you do? You scramble like right. hell. Yep. So just put yourself in that place. And it's something, you know, that I can't say that I can say that I had put myself in that place because I've been manufacturing for so many years. Not exactly that because we were locked into a contract, but it had a 30 day escape clause. Um, Uh, And if we tried to escape, I don't think it would have gone so smooth. (laughs) Right. If we would have called him up and said, Hey, Hey, you know, you're in the, we got a better deal. (laughs) Yeah. You're in the Bible belt. Our moral compass doesn't point in your direction. I think there would have been litigation, which we we decided not to pursue. Right. right? We decided to pursue staying in business and hunting down. And and we did, we found a, we found a supplier, but we didn't find a supplier until, do you remember the month? No, I I do not remember the month. Yeah. It was October. Oh my God. So it took us from March to October. So what he did is he had, I think he had six months right. worth, worth of, of mat- material. material. Their- and so what he did is he made me buy that six months of material. He held me over. The, he held me right to the fire or held me over right. the ledge or whatever. Oh, and said, it was so bad. Right. So it took so every stressful. ounce of cash flow that we, every ounce of cash that we had to buy this And then not pay our bills, not pay our bills, pay slow, pay slow. And I think we finally got it paid off in. I don't even know. And it was, 
mid six figures money. Um, and we're a small business. We don't, we don't make that kind of money and, or have that kind of cash flow. And it, it didn't, it was, I think it was July that we finally got it paid off. Oh, it was awful. But there were some other impacts, like like we were dealing with the, um, we, we saw this as, as the war effort, and we had a lot of wives working for us right. whose well, husbands were so, overseas. So our, 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 uh, our uh, what was she, our controller, operations manager, her partner, um, was a retired, was a retired, actually was sorry. working at the time as a, at, for team three as a, as a Navy SEAL. Right. Uh, he wasn't deployed. He was running training ops in the desert outside of San but Diego. We had, we had another person. We too. had another person whose husband was a pilot. Right. Who was deployed. I mean, this is San Diego. Right. You and get a, a lot of Navy yeah, had, pe- uh, right. families. And then we had another person whose husband was, uh, just a seaman. Right. And, um, and they were pissed. They were, I think they were more pissed than I was. Yeah. Right. Well, like I mean, and they, pissed. when they walked into my office and told you and I, cause we, we always share an office when they walked in and told us, who said, I think it was, I think it was, uh, Carrie who told us that she could not believe that this person was supporting the people overseas and the government at the time was but, supporting the people overseas mm-hmm. by giving them ammo or med or, right. you know, Which is Copenhagen valid, and valid. all this stuff. Totally valid, right? Totally support that. You know, I a hundred percent support that, but here is, and this is from Carrie's mouth. I'm going to kind of paraphrase mm-hmm. it because it's been so many years, but I'm an emotional being um, and I need fulfillment as well. Right. And now you're taking pleasure Away, of, you, yeah. you've taken the love of my life and you've thrown that human on the front lines and, and her. Yeah. And yeah. You've, you've thrown that human on the front lines, but you've taken my abil- ability to motion emotionally or sexually fulfill myself away. Right. So you've taken the person I love away and now you've taken this away. Fuck you. Right. It was, so, it was so, that's, so much. So that's when we, yeah, that's when we came up with, with the make dildos, not make war, dildos, not war <laughs> because right. Because it was w- with that, the salesperson telling us that he yeah. couldn't believe that we were getting stifled uh-huh. when they were making all this war machine stuff, but not uh, letting us make right. toys. And that, I think that was what Carrie, it lit Carrie up as oh, well. Yeah. It lit all of the women in. So we wrote a press way. release about it. Yes, we did. <laughs> and sent it out on the wire. Um, back when and we, had we the got and we got response. Yeah, we got a call from MSNBC, who wanted to come by and do a story, and they did. And they did. And make dildos got not war got a lot of traction. Yeah, it did. And I think it, you know, to me, it's. I don't understand war, but I know rudimentary human nature. People are going to fight. Um, but I think it's some inequality. Well, it's it's what what you value, you know, and this gets us back to morals and values. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not a problem with someone. In fact, what we do when we are either um, approached by a new vendor or if we are shopping for a new vendor of anything, whether it's um, business supplies or or packaging or anything, is we always say what we do. Yep. And ask, are they going to be comfortable with it? And if it's a sales rep, we now go and say, but we need you to go to the manager or the controlling, the person who, who really oversees you, your, the company and make certain they're comfortable with us. Right. Because it's very important that, that first of all, for us, that our, our supply chain doesn't dry up. Well, that's part of the reason, right? You can... And what I wanted to say about supply chain is when you're, when you're thinking about supply chain for your business, you have to think about a bunch of different avenues that affect your supply chain. Mm -hmm. And one of those is the human element. Right now we're facing a worldwide pandemic. Exactly. And that has disrupted, that has disrupted supply chain hugely. And no one saw that coming, but it's also, it's also other things. It's all of a sudden a new CEO comes in, a new chairman of a board comes in. That's one of your suppliers. Mm -hmm. A, a, a box vendor, um, you know, someone who's supplying your packing tape. Right. Someone, we talked about it in another video, someone who you want to screen print 
shirts for you for marketing. Um, the human factor really shows itself more in our business, but it can show yourself in any business, right? Right. Someone just doesn't like you. <laughs> so you, you can do all this forecasting and plan the semiconductor market of how you're going to, you know, f- fit your new video chips in your right. board or how your, how your coders are going, how your, your team of coders are going to go. But human nature plays a huge, huge, part huge role in your supply chain. And I think that, you know, so anyway, we launched the Make Dildos Not War, and that got a lot of traction. It kind of, we wanted to do that to bring the point across, and it did. It brought the point across of equality for those who were left at home. Right. They, they, they needed equal care. Exactly. Right, and it's it's the death and dying mm-hmm. s- situation, the, gr- the the grieving process of, uh, it's just it, tough. It, or ju- just depression, just the, the, the absence of human touch and human emotions and 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 that that connection yeah agreed. Um, so um being a a, a mission-based company yep ethics and morals have always driven us and i thoroughly believe that a person's right to their own sexual happiness and well-being makes a quality of life. It, it's part of quality of life. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I celebrate is someone's ability to choose whether they deal with us or not. Correct. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't hold a grudge against this man right. for no. For doing that, I I think that he could have done it in a. I think he could have done it in a different way. I think I he could have. Yeah, I think he could have given us some more time. Mm-hmm. Um, and a matter of fact, if I remember right, I think that the two sales reps went back to bat for us oh, they did. and got us ninety days instead of thirty days. Right. Um, to start chewing up some of that supply and make ready to receive so much material. Um, but yeah, the right to choose and, right and, to choose and is everything right. And the right to choose and the right to, to think about equality, you nice. know, that, that each person deserves like what you said, mm-hmm. the right to choose. And when it's taken away, it's, it's brutal. It <laughs> is. It is. Um, do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. Well then. I, I mean, what did, what, well, I, let's, I do, I guess I would say that, you know, what did we, what did we learn? What, what, what lesson can we give the people who listen to our show yeah. about, about this, you know, about supply chain and about thinking morally and thinking about how to diversify your supply chain. So when this stuff happens, that it's really important. And I know you hear, a, you know, I heard it all through college. I heard it through grad school, you know, about supply chain diversification, but that gets, that's tough. It is, especially because we, for us, having one supply chain of silicone. Well, um, we're specialized, right? I don't have two people making our material, right? I don't have two people making our material, so we're very specialized. So we still have to trust our our business partners. Well, and then communication, making sure Mm -hmm. that we're on top of it, making sure that, you know, when cash is tight and we can't necessarily pay our bill exactly on time, that we're we're communicating communicating. and we're not burning bridges as we roll. And, you know, that's that's a lesson for everyone, you know, because it's sometimes embarrassing. I guess it isn't for me anymore because we're Tannis and a mission based company so we're always <laughs> out of money but um we call our vendors and trying say, to do I'm our sorry trying to do our best to communicate and i know it's embarrassing sometimes but i i think it keeps your supply chain rolling and and always be thinking ahead on your supply chain because you never know what's going to smack you upside oh, yeah. the head this is a huge lesson the pandemic is a huge lesson on supply chain the world's oh, supply yeah. chain is just ravaged because it doesn't matter if your supply chain's in the U.S. right now or your supply chain's offshore. Mm-hmm. Um, they're both they're both ravaged. Yeah. So so build in place 
And then for a little company, how much inventory can you hold without being cash poor? Cash poor. But you, in that's case all of the all of your wealth is on your shelves, right? And then and you and have, then, may not be able to make payroll if that if you're too lop- lopsided. Yeah, I don't think any employee that we have, if I were to go, here's you know two thousand dollars <laughs> worth, worth of, of worth a dick. Would, would that work <laughs> no. as your paycheck? No. And, you, I, and you were really good, so here's your bonus. I'm going to give you two XL toys. <laughs> that's not going to work, <laughs> right? So. Um, it, it's just being, being in communication, right? You know, that's, that's the huge thing with your supply chain, keeping an ear to the ground in your supply chain. And, you know, it was, it was communication and it was us being true to our word. Why those two sales reps stepped up to their CEO and said, you can't do this, man. Absolutely. You can't do this to these people. Thank you. You know, well, you, you took that one on the chin too. Oh I'm yeah. Sorry. I've taken a few on the chin being yeah. a mission based dildo maker. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I got you in the all. <laughs> <laughs> well, bottoms up everyone. Bottoms up. Thanks everybody. Bottoms up.